that while Ted Malt had discovered double glazing, the residents of Castle Grayskull, with all their high technology, still had all those open windows. Yesterday we are looking at He-Man, to be precise, the game of the 1987 movie. You know, the one you were quite excited about, because it was going to be He-Man and Skeletor, and what you got was just some kind of weird thing with a wrong He-Man, a wrong Skeletor. And they're not even battling on it in Eternia, but in America in a car park. Yeah, it was all a bit rubbish, wasn't it? Nevertheless, in 1987, you couldn't move for He-Man games. US Gold had two out, an arcade game and an adventure game. And then there's Gremlin with this, the game of the movie. We're better firing up, starting on the Sinclair Spectrum. There he is, Dolph Langer, whatever his name is. Uh, from lots of action movies and uh, the wrong skeletal. So there we are. We are He-Man. And what we've got to do, the plot of the movie, basically something comes through from Eternia that two kids find and then all hell breaks loose in America and He-Man and Skeletor battle. So what we're going to do is go around town shooting all of Skeletor's minions and then pick up the various things we need at location. So we'll be told shortly where we need to go. The game on the 8 bits is supplied with a map. Now look at the icon on the top left. It says north. So upwards is north. And here comes our message from... Which character is that? Man at Arms? I don't recognise that character. Orko? Ram Man? So we've got to go to the scrapyard to meet anonymous person that we don't know. So suddenly north is left, rather than up. And this is a problem because He-Man is a game that comes with a map that shows you where to go. But you are disorientated because the coders uh, decided they couldn't work out how to go left, scroll left to right. So rather than work that out, they make you always walk up and down regardless of the direction. Amstrad CPC. I mean, how could you get He-Man and Skeletor so wrong in this movie? And He-Man is a little kind of cutesy, crushed-down character on the Amstrad. Nice colours. Got to work out where we are. You can't press the key and get a map. You have to refer back to your manual. But as I say, it's a, the game is a master of... Well, not the universe, but disorientating you because... It would be so simple if, if North was always up. So now we're going to go East, but now we're going South. And now we're going North again. Just, just nuts. C64 version. He's got some big dad leash music. To brighten the day. The other games that came out this year were the uh, arcade game by US Gold and the Super Adventure, also by US Gold. I believe the arcade game and possibly the Super Adventure as well immediately hit budget uh, when this Gremlin game came out at the end of 87. I believe it was out for Christmas, but uh, conveniently the magazines only seemed to get hold of it in 1988. Yes, this is the Atari ST version. I can't tell you if that's authentic audio from the movie because it's so long since I've seen it. Please insert disc 2 and press return. Yes, it's a two-disc game on the ST for some inexplicable reason. Probably to make you feel like you've got some value for money. That's not a digitised image there, by the way. It's uh, recreated by tracing paper by putting it over some movie artwork, apparently. Yes, there's a lot of disc swapping. This game was really heavily advertised, really heavily advertised, and CMVG ran a, a special feature from memory around Christmas, possibly in the issue with Thundercats on the cover. So we land on Earth present day, yes. Again, this is a budget thing for the movie. They didn't need to do sci-fi settings. If you 
do everything in a car park. Now looking very similar to the 8-bit versions. Your compass is there on the bottom there, west and east, currently corresponding with the correct directions. But trust me, that will change. There's a timer. You get uh, nine game minutes to complete the game. That seems to me to be about 30 or so minutes in real life. Why it doesn't count down from 30 minutes in real life, I don't know. You have to locate chords as well, musical notes spread around the map, and you can't complete the game without all of them because that's how your magical friends who live in the castle will travel with you. But on the ST version, you get an in-game map. Trouble is you have to swap the disc out to see it. Here we go. We're there. Now, I know the scrapyard is somewhere around here. And there we should battle with some evil people like um, Lizard Man and uh, Evil Lynn. Right, we entered the junkyard. Sorry, not the scrapyard. I'll change disc again. Enter the junkyard. Right, who is it we're going to battle? Thankfully, on the cracked version, this all works off one disc. Because, you know, it, there's nothing to this game really, is there? Of course it can work from one disc. Just to make, make you feel you've got more value for money. So basically, you now, rather than... Oh yeah, that's the point about this. You see me walking around shooting people. He-Man, famous for his magical sword, never uses his magical sword, ever! Not entirely in the game! Now, perhaps the movie plot sees He-Man's magical sword taken away from him. Perhaps that's it. Or perhaps the programmers couldn't be bothered. So instead, He-Man basically kicks a man to death. Who is that? Lizard Man? Someone? Probably getting names all wrong. Let's kick him in the groin, why not? Because you only get two moves. Oh, you get, oh, you get three moves. You get a head move, a punch move, and a kick move. It, it's worse than Human Killing Machine. Graphics are quite nice. Though, on the Spectrum, same moves. I've picked up two chords so far on the Specky. But I'm just kicking my opponent in the groin. And you see the swords depicted on how the energy levels are. Can't tell who this band is. It's not Gremlin's fault the movie's rubbish. I have to say that. We've got found another chord. And the characters are unrecognisable from the cartoon that everyone knew. In, my, in the reviews, I, I read some of the reviews to you from Ace. Because they said it had a weak design and... Um, Uninspiring and repetitive. So here we are. Here's He Man. You can pick up swords for more energy. Can't use them though. Ace gave it three three six nine on the Spectrum, three nine four on the Amstrad, four three nine on the C sixty four, which we're on now. They got the impression that Gremlin won happy with the game, and Gremlin said to them, "We could have put more money into the project, but then we wouldn't have recouped our costs." Do you think Gremlin spent so much on this license they couldn't afford to do a proper job? I think that's what I'm taking away from this. So we've, um, yeah, we've got to go to an electronic shop called Charlie's. By the way, if you don't meet, go to all the waypoints in the game, you can still play, but you'll never win. So I've been told to go to Charlie's score, store, but I've not been to the scrapyard yet on the C64. <laughs> He-Man, all one word. Isn't He-Man supposed to be two words? Thank goodness you're here. There's something trouble brewing. Grildor says he saw Skeletor's Doom Patrol coming through a huge portal. He says they've got enough weapons for a small war. Oh no, that means Skeletor must have a fix on the key and will be here at any moment. We must prepare. Okay, He-Man. Remember, all eternity depends on us. We must succeed. Now we go into a game where you have to shoot the people at the windows. Uh, 70, between 70 and 100 hits are needed between the various versions. It's not hugely difficult. The sword energy system is slightly different on the C64. You get four swords, not one. Spectrum version, there's a 
Skeletors. Henchmen. All looking exactly the same, ducking up and down. Beastman, Beastman. We've seen Beastman yet. Was that Beastman in the scrapyard? He was particularly useless. It's RST on the map screen, so I should be near the electronics store. But remember, as I said, on the C64 version, I haven't managed to go to the scrapyard yet, and therefore I won't be able to complete the game. Uh, north is now... No, no, north was left. It's, west is now left. It's very confusing. Now, north is now left. It, it's incredibly confusing. And look how you teleport into the screens. So you don't emerge on the left-hand side or the top. You emerge in the middle. How? How? Want well, to look at the map again, so put the disc in. Oh, dear. Right, so it should be north, whichever way north is. Who knows? Which way's north? North is actually north. Hurrah! That's uh, Charlie's store. You went to Charlie's store. And you have to change the disc. Because a Sinclair user gave this 7 out of 10. Sin your Sinclair gave it 6 out of 10 and said it was disappointing. Uh, a disappointing tie in. Zap gave it 57%. CMVG said, if you enjoyed the cartoon, you'll enjoy this. No, no, you won't. No, you won't. Perhaps if you enjoyed the film. He man, thank okay, yeah, it's it's this woman again. That's not um what's her woman? We're supposed to be rescuing the woman with the red hair. You remember He Man. I should perhaps script this stuff and do more research beforehand, but you know everyone knows He Man. Although no one knows this terrible film. People have been asking me, oh, should I watch the film? Because sometimes terrible films are good. No, you shouldn't watch the film. This is this is a terrible film that's actually a terrible film. Oh, right, okay. So, uh, here we go again. This is quite fun, but it's not a lot. Here, it's mega, mega rations. you think they'd use more sampled speech or something from the movie on the 16-bit version. I say 16-bit version. This is the only 16-bit version. Uh, speaking of uh, versions, there is an MSX version. I have tried and tried and tried to get it working and completely failed. I've tried multiple machines out, multiple images. The best I ever get is a blue screen with nothing happening. Tried loading up a cassette image. That came out with a memory message. I can't get it to work. It looks the same as the Spectrum version, as you'd expect. Speaking of which, here we are on the Specky. So I think we need 70 or 75 on the Specky. Something like that. 67, 68. Come on. 69, 70. Hurrah! You find a cord! Right, now it's that thing. What's that thing called? Why can't they have Orko? Everyone liked Orko, kind of. I mean, he's like the least worst one. He floats around. I mean, goodness knows what he is. In any case, you just wanted Skeletor to win, didn't you? Because he's the best. Surely, surely that. So north is now left. So we're going west. And we've got to go to the west of the city, so I'm going in the right direction. Spectrum version helpfully changes colour between sectors of the city. So now we go north. And now north's up! ST version. He-Man doesn't have eyes on the ST. I'm now lost. I'm now completely lost on the ST and cannot find my way to where I need to be. Because you don't even have the helpful colour coding of the spectrum between the areas of the city. They just all look the same. I'm in vaguely the right area of the city, I think. This is where Evil Lynn's baddies are on the Amstrad and Spectrum versions, so... I think I should be in the right... Which way am I going now? That's west. Which way am I going? Which way am I going? 
Why are you appearing in the middle of the screen? I don't understand the logic of this. There's no logic. It hurts my head trying to work this out. I'm now going west. I need to go left, which is north, which will then be up. I'm going to go up. I'm just going to go east. Come on, this way, this way, this way. Now I'm going north. No, I'm going north. Let's go north. This should be where... I hope Evil Lynn is. I don't know anymore. I'm either going to be bored to death or run out of time. My, my bet is that I'm going to be bored to death first. Some people in their reviews compare this to Gauntlet. I know. I know. I mean, there's a comparison to Gauntlet. But, you know, it's like comparing a larder to a Formula One race car, isn't it, really? Well, I'm now completely bored of the ST version and I can't find Evil Lynn. So let's go over to the Amstead version where I should be able to find her. Right, so we are going north on the west side of the city. On our north that way. And as I say, on the ST version, a luxury of an in-game map. On the Amstrad Spectrum and C64, you'll be looking at your cassette inlay. And you will have no idea where you actually are as a result. You'll be able to see the city, but you have to try and work out your positioning. Whereas at least on the ST, it shows you your current position. And that makes it even harder. He-Man looks like Steve Irwin, the kind of person who wrestled crocodiles and stuff. Why does He-Man have a laser gun? Where's his sword? Why can't I fire swords? Why can't I fight things with my sword? Ah, uh, right, okay. We, we now felt, we've we now found where Evil Lynn is hanging out. And now we do this thing where we shoot the same bad guys going up and down the screen until you've killed a predetermined number of them. Same thing on the spectrum. You go up and down till you've killed the right number of baddies. There's no variety. I found a chord. Right, okay. Here's Skeletor. I have your friends and the key. Give yourself up. Never. I would die before that happens. I'm Skeletor. <laughs> That'd be better, wouldn't it? I mean, why didn't the movie have that? That's what Skeletor was so good at. Okay, so we get to choose if we come quietly or stand and fight. Now, Pro tip here, come quietly. If you stand and fight, it's game over. Okay, so here's Skeletor, who's got a hat. We've got two, oh, we've got one life left. Right, we've got a battle Skeletor, who's always going to... There's going to be... He's going to try and push me off the edge, isn't he? Oh, dear, he's going to push me off the edge. So I just basically keep punching Skeletor in the stomach. He's... Power isn't going down. So I'm guessing he's trying to push me off the edge. So we need to push him off the edge. As used to happen in every episode of He-Man. Everyone seemed to fall down a giant hole. But the next week they'll be back. Oh dear, I'm losing a lot of energy here. Am I going to do this? Come on, Prince Adam. I mean He-Man, who's definitely a different person. And not the same person. How did anybody not notice? Go on, off the edge you go. Go on, Rupert Murdoch, down you go. Congratulations, He-Man, you've rescued the sorcerers. That's who it was, and they based the fell meanings of Skeletor until next week. This is a great day for all Eternians. Skeletor is defeated for a week, and you are master of the universe. Sorry. Master of the universe! And here's what happens on the Amstrad if you choose to stay and fight. 
game over. Which it will also be if you don't have enough cords or you miss any of those battles and you go straight to Charlie's store instead of the scrapyard. It's that kind of game. Take one hugely disappointing movie that that throws away all the goodwill that the cartoon had and then try and turn it into a computer game where the company concerned has spent all the money on the license and none of it on the development. And what you end up with is Masters of the Universe. This is woeful tripe. It just... Oh! It, it, it just... It could have been, even if the movie had been terrible, this could have been one of the biggest licenses of the year if the game had been good. After all, remember, everyone had played Robocop before they saw the movie. And He-Man, yeah, yeah, He-Man, Skeletor, Beastman, Evil Lynn, all that stuff, living in a castle, King Randall, all that stuff. But, uh, you know, it's just terrible, terrible, terrible. Where do you start with any of these versions? Outside Spectrum versions are... They're all rub everything's rubbish! What am I saying? It's a terrible game! The, they've managed to get the same gameplay between all the versions, but this this whole directional thing, this whole directional thing of North not always being North, it's just... There's no gameplay reason for it. It's because the coders didn't have time or couldn't be bothered. I, I don't understand it. Why on earth? Imagine playing one of the original top-down Grand Theft Auto games and suddenly finding North isn't North. It's just, it's just nuts. Imagine playing Fire Lord and suddenly you go to a different screen and it flips around and you teleport into the middle of the screen. Nuts. It's nuts. Ah, oh, this is just, this is terrible, terrible tripe on every single format and some a few nice graphics on the 64 and uh, kind of don't really cover this up. I mean, a few nice sprites. And I like the He-Man sprite on the Amstrad version as well. Even if it does look like Steve Irwin, as it has a lot of charm in that sprite. But the entire lot, the entire thing is absolute dust rubbish. It's a cesspit of a game. Diabolical rubbish that even Gremlin were letting the magazines know, yeah, this, yeah, this one ain't too good. Ah, oh, just, it stinks. It honks. It's total dirge. <laughs>